James, I would like for you to write down, if you're only going to live one year, that's it, you got one year left, 12 months, doctor says, maybe not a doctor, maybe a neighbor says, hey, I think you might only live 12 months, okay? Somebody says you have 12 months to live, that's it for you. If you had 12 months to live, in the context of that, with that time frame, what is it that you would definitely get done? You can only write down three things. Something you would definitely get done if you only had one year to live. You gotta be kind of serious about it. I'm not gonna spy on you, but if you only had one year to live, what would you definitely do? Now, as you guys were thinking about this, again, one year, you gotta kind of mentally, emotionally, whatever, travel there and go, if I really did only have one year, what would I do? And as you're thinking about that, I'm going to give you a, a story. Uh, uh, it's a, it could be demotivational, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Um, good friend of mine, he was my roommate in college. Now, you could imagine being my roommate. I had three roommates in three semesters, okay? Bad deal. People couldn't stand living with me. My wife, I don't know how she puts up with me, okay? But I paid my roommate. I said, Mark, we're going to jettison the beds because we're out of room for the printers and all the machines and stuff we have in our dorm room. So if you sleep on the floor, I'll buy you a jersey once a week, like a pro sports jersey, and I'll pay you. He's like, okay. <coughs> so Mark and I have been lifelong friends. He's my roommate at the time. He's living on the floor in the dorm rooms. And Mark says, hey, bro, i got to go to Stillwater, Oklahoma, to help out a buddy. He had a flat tire or something. Do you want to go there? We can help pick up his car and drive it over to the shop and this and that. I said, actually, I have an event tonight. I can't do it. I'm going to be DJing for Delta Airlines. I can't, can't go. So Mark leaves, drives, apparently saw some type of uh, uh, rodent animal, went around it. He ends up getting killed, okay? And he died when he was 19. And this was right before I got married. And I'd known the guy since he was two. And uh, his dad says, you're funny. Will you speak at his funeral? Because I think his funeral should be fun and uplifting, and, and uh, I think it should be good. Well, imagine your best friend, you get asked to give the eulogy. I don't know if you guys have had this situation or a family member. You don't really know what to say, and you don't want to say anything that would minimize the importance of your life. I don't want to, I mean, if I give a B-level performance this morning, you know, you can, you can blame Sherry and give her a hard time, and I feel bad about it, but it's not like someone's going to die, or someone didn't die. But this is like the cherry on top with your life, and I'm supposed to give the caveat and the nuances about what made them great. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about Mark, and Mark was talking about he was going to start working out soon. He always said, I'm going to start working out soon. I'm going to start, he was going to start coaching baseball at this high school. He was going to, he was going to, and he, and he didn't do, you know, those things. So when I talked about his eulogy, I talked about what he did do. And he was an incredible friend. He would drop anything, and I mean, he dropped his whole day to go help a guy uh, move his car. You know, I mean, he just cancels his whole day to go help a guy, drives an you know, hour to Stillwater to help a guy with his car. That's the kind of guy he was. Um, and he did a lot of cool things. We played Star Wars as kids. Um, he was always had the funny joke, whenever my business ideas would go sour. I wasn't married, so he was kind of like my man, my man friend. So Mark would go, oh, bro, you can make it. You can do it. He actually told me to uh, propose to the girl I was dating, because he had said, well, bro, you don't know if you're going to be around forever. You might as well propose to her. So I kind of feel like my marriage is somewhat attributed to him, because I wasn't going to ask her. So there's a lot of things that happened that were really, really awesome. But it occurred to me when I was given his eulogy, not before, but as I was up there giving it, what if I die? Like, what if I die on the way home from this funeral? How many, un I mean, how many people should I have called to appreciate that I didn't? How many, you know, people should I have told? Because I didn't tell him, like, I love you, bro. I just said, all right, dude, I'll see you. That's how I, that was my last word with him. Yeah, dude, I'll see you. And I wish it could have been more profound. Than that. So now, usually when I tell people bye, I have much more of a, you probably think it's weird and obsessive, but I'm always like, Hey, really appreciate you. Thank you. You know, I always, I always try to, because I feel like I should have done that there. And so I'm asking you guys today is if you had, if you were like Mark, but imagine Mark, 18-year-old kid, and they say, hey, I know, you know, you're great physical health, but you will die in a car accident 12 months from today. How would he have lived? How would you have lived? I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough question. But I'm asking you today, when you leave today, could we at least all agree upon that we're going to be thankful that every day we're here? Um, there's a Bible verse. If you don't believe in the Bible, you can, I don't know, somehow synthesize this into something non-biblical. But it says, you know, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. 
I think we could all agree that we should be thankful that we're alive. You know, we should be very thankful, because everyone, everyone can say that. So, I'm asking you guys today just to embrace your life and to go, yes, I am alive. I made it through another day, and be excited about that, and then be moving forward towards those three things. Because I live right now as though I'm not going to make it. 